I would hate to go next. Uh, <laughs> anyway, our eighth presenter, uh, he is the ec it's okay, he can handle it because he's the economic resilience lead with, see how I did that? With Resilience Calgary, trying to instill confidence in a VUCA world, which stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, developing strategies and solutions that strengthen our city. He is educated as a leisureist. He is also Mayor Nenshi's number one frenemy. Let's please bring to the uh, podium, Mr. Jason Cameron. Good evening. First of all, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, it's great. I've already learned two big things tonight. Uh, the first one, if you haven't seen a Jason Long film, it makes you look bad, not him. And, uh, and uh, my deck that I, now that I'm looking at it, screens midlife crisis. <laughs> uh, I, I was worried about narcissism, but now I'm really, really happy about that. All right, so let's get into it. All right, good evening all, again. <laughs> Thanks again for this opportunity. Uh, I appreciate in uh, how someone old school like me can still stay relevant to those that come next. Now I have an attention span made for Petra, Petra, Petra. And uh, so if I don't get to the point or the punchline, it's just because I got distracted or didn't get there. And uh, right, now I didn't have much growing up. I. Uh, Grew up on a farm east of Wainwright, and it didn't take me long to realize I didn't have the smarts for Carleton or the, uh, or the trust fund account for an Ivy League school. So I, uh, I was in my last month of grade 12 when my guidance counselor cornered me in, about my future. And I was paddling a lot back then, and she said, you should be a river guide. And I said, I should be a river guide. <laughs> and then I graduated with a minor in uh, river guiding. And... <laughs> Uh, realized that the rivers and the territories are frozen most of the year and I need to get a real job. So while I did learn a ton on the river, uh, needing money and finding it harder to fit in my wetsuit every day, I took a job with the Calgary Police leading diversity. I mean, a lot of white straight males were doing diversity work back then. <laughs> and for the last 16 years, and for the last 16 years, I had a job with the city that I could be passionate about. Now, adventuring isn't about, uh, is not without risks. It's, uh, if you're feeding chicken to gators, for just for the selfie, like my daughter, make sure you're in front of someone that's slower than you. And if it doesn't work out, scars are great stories, even for social workers. So stick your neck out, dig in hard as that weight breaks over the, the deck of your bow, and speak up when you feel you need to be heard. And as parents, my wife Amanda and I often use our expeditions to pass on life lessons to our daughter Josephine. Nature's great for teachable moments. You get immediate feedback with real consequences. So last year we were in Vietnam in the hopes that my seven-year-old would get some perspective and begin to appreciate how good she has it. We landed in Hanoi and, and ended up in the mountain village of Sapa. We met our guide Sue and headed out on a two-day trek where my daughter would see real poverty and be eternally grateful for her privileged life. <laughs> we stayed with Hmong families and we even visited some of Sue's uh, uh, we even visited Sue's home where she shared with her parents, her sister, her in-laws, and her nieces and nephews. And in the winter months, the pigs. So afterwards, uh, my daughter and I, we dropped back after and I was checking in and, and, and seeing how she made out. Did she appreciate her home? Did she appreciate her bedroom? Even having heat. Could she imagine what it was like to be so poor? She stared up at me, uh, stared up at me with disbelief and said, Dad, money isn't everything. Those kids got to see their grandparents and their cousins every day. They even got to share their room with two pigs. <laughs> we don't have pigs, uh, but she did make me revisit how I show up as a parent. It isn't always about climbing the corporate ladder. It's not a big risk for me, but uh, it's about being there with those uh, and, and being present with those you're with. It just took my seven-year-old to make it hit home. So read the river. It's never the same way twice. You have to stay alert, stay nimble, and choose your course wisely. Even the best line through the rapids can have dangers just below the surface. That's the same professionally. Things change fast. And I'm going to move on. So have great mentors like Chief Sampson from Calgary Emergency Management. Uh, he was an early one of mine. He reminded me that uh, just going into an EMS strike and lockout, that at the end of this, we were all going to be brothers and sisters, and we all had jobs to do, and we had to, need, we had to be there for each other. I knew instantly that I wanted to work for him. 
I also had Chris Arthur, she's my current boss at Resilient Calgary, and, and I, this is my third time working for her because she has this uncanny ability to uh, read people, assign them work and portfolios that match their skill sets, that allow them to succeed and grow as an employee, but also as a per person. And I know it looks really religious, it was supposed to be rocky, uh, but uh, <laughs> Gina, I, I, I'll, you and I can talk later. So surround yourself with people that motivate you and are willing to pull uh, in the same direction. A lot of those folks from the city are here tonight, uh, from my wife Amanda Afonso to my best friends in the Jam Flam, to the community activists and colleagues, long nights with me in the, in the Emergency Operations Center, uh, and those folks on building a better next. Find people that inspire you. And not every trip goes as planned. You can't pack up your tent and go home all the time. You have to be strong, you have to be resilient, and you have to be you. It's not about giving up, it's about searching for the next big option. Changing direction doesn't mean compromising your values. It's about the best way to bring others with you on that journey. So take time and reflect on the last set of rapids or last night's campfire. It's about enjoying the memories that you spent all that effort creating. This is on the Green River in Utah after a horrendous run over Disaster Falls to the gates of Lodor. We lost an entire raft, a cooler full of food, and tons of gear. We still spent that evening sharing stories of the harrowing experience. How well the rescue went, and we should do the trip next year. <laughs> so a guide has to be able to tell a great story, even in 20 seconds. So just eight days after the flood water received, receded, the city asked people to come out. We worked all Sunday night with teams in the EOC to make that day happen. Buses, food trucks, washrooms and supplies, they were all set up and in place for the, in the wee hours of the morning. And Calgarians showed up. You know, I was already 24 hours into my shift when, uh, that morning, but I was so energized. I grabbed the mic from my truck and I stood on a large tent box and I engaged the crowd. And I was giving instructions and I was throwing out witty one-liners, but the crowd was just largely disengaged. And then, <laughs> as if they could finally hear me properly, my well-planted jokes began to hit home. The crowd went wild, there was cheers and waves. I felt like I was already just killing it. It was like my own HBO comedy special. But one of the proudest days of my career, and could this all really be for me? Then there was a hand on my shoulder and that familiar voice said, thanks Jason, I got this. And with that, Mayor Ninchy was, to... <laughs> was able to usher me off the stage and, and began to work the crowd. Now there are many pictures from that event and I've hunted and I can't find one with me in it. <laughs> That's how fast my time in the limelight was over. Like a TV pilot that never goes into production, I just disappeared. I mean, that was my truck, that was my mic, that might even have been my SEMA jacket. But it all goes to show you can have great mentors, a strong team, and be resilient. There's always going to be someone there to upstage you, especially Nenshi. So, to be old school does take navigating some dangerous waters, but more often now, it's about sharing what I've learned from my time on the water and passing the oars on to those that come next. Woo!